Hey guys, it's CVAC Zero doing another Reddit Dota 2 League cast, and, and today it's an in house with the Captain's Fiber versus You Ain't Seen My Nips. And uh, this is going to be interesting because first pickup is a lone droid. Like, you don't see lone droid often first pick in leagues like this. Normally, there are not very good lone druid players. Um, and, and I'm surprised to first pick like, pick them like that because lone druid is a hard hero to play effectively. But I, I'm guessing You Ain't Seen My Nips has a good lone druid player in his team <clears throat> so fiber decides to pick up the quap and life sailor both extremely good heroes here and taking advantage of his first two pick picks quap a very viable mid and i honestly in my opinion the best mid in the game um in this meta game currently life stealer is um a very good carry he did get um kind of got counter nerfed a little bit or, or counter buff uh yeah nerf there we go and so uh, his Rage and Infest um, are obviously are very good and now they can run the Quap Nax uh, bomb and look out for that because it would just add a lot more AoE and you know Nax is just more mobile when he's inside a Quap. So Bane gets picked up here and this is an excellent pickup by Yuan Say My Nips. It is almost a direct, oh it is a direct counter to Lifestealer. Um, Bane by himself can disable two heroes, two heroes that's right. And he's a pretty strong laner. You can combo him with the Jakiro, you can combo him with the Lina, you can combo him with the Lashrek, you can combo him with any stunner that just deals so much damage. And it's just hard uh, to go against this. Um, so Bane, look, look to uh, look for the Raided to pick up um, a hero to combo with him very well. And um, so you ain't see my nips has chosen to ban out the shadow demon uh while captain fireber bans out the gyro and these are all good bans so far um shadow demon is notoriously good as a, as a support hero rubik also gets banned out um no one wants to deal with him um they're doing pretty pretty typical competitive bans i'm interested to see if they're going to go with some any new cheese strats but so far the the picks have been pretty close to the meta game in the competitive scene. So for the fourth ban, um Nips could probably well it's hard for him to, to ban anybody because he still wants to leave some heroes in a pool for him. But uh Darkseer is available. Um I think banning the Darkseer would be uh, the best ban that they can do right now. Um Darkseer has that surge and really great for team fights. And it's not like Nips needs to pick up Darkseer because Lone Druid is their solo offlane right here. Um, so I think Darkseer would be the ideal band. Uh, Weaver could get banned. Um, Bounty Hunter could get banned. I think right now the um, the Dyer are the ones that are looking that are looking for the offlane heroes. <clears throat> so it is a Darkseer band. So it's like it's almost like he's listening to me. Um, Either that, or I'm just reading his mind. <laughs> um, so for the third pickup for Captain Fiber, uh, I think now would be the chance to grab his um, offlane heroes because it, it will just get harder to grab them as the draft go on. Uh, of course, uh, Nips can only has one more ban, so it's not like it's it's bad or anything. Um, they need basically their full tri lane. Well, no, they need two supports and they need the offlane. A um, couple supports you can look at that combos well with Jakiro. Um, just any stunners or anyone that can that can uh, help life to get closer. Jakiro is good. Um, Cicado got banned. Uh, Lena Leshrac, uh, Shadow Demon got banned. However, so maybe they should think to block the Bane pick. So I'm interested. Kyber's uh, Fiber's kind of stuck right here, and he's taking his time. And, and it's just sucked. Though. He's got plenty of time still. <clears throat> so I guess a couple off laners he could decide to pick up: Windrunner, Wind uh, Weaver, Bounty Hunter. <clears throat> I think all of those heroes would have a difficult time since Bane is in a pool. <clears throat> Especially if they do the solo lane against a tri lane. If they run run it that way, Bane could easily kill him. It's a less track pickup. Um, so maybe they'll have a play stunner coming up soon. You could have a vengeful spirit, um, but <clears throat> you can with have a vengeful spirit uh, get the stun off. You can have a less track combo with the earth, with the split earth. Then they come in and, and deal the finishing blow with a slow. <clears throat> so not a bad combo in general because life starter is just really good as a um, 
as a tri-lane hero, and it looks like Viber wants to run that aggressive tri-lane. So on the Radiant side, um, Nips could look, oh, he picks up a mid Warlock. Warlock will go through that, will most likely go for mid. <clears throat> There's a chance they don't want to run a mid, but um, mid Warlock is really strong. Um, his base damage early on is really high. Uh, and, and I don't I don't think he he could definitely outlane. It, it, he makes it relatively uh, relatively even in the mid lane with the Quap against Warlock. Warlock should have an easier time early on because Quap's base damage is really bad to be honest. Uh, Warlock's base damage because it's high, he should be able to not only get the harass, uh, but he can push the lanes just a little bit for him to go for the rune and have a bit of rune control. Uh, the only thing is, he's all pretty much a terrible ganker. Uh, he could gank with his level 6 and try to push down towers, but the but the level 6 is really, really long. Okay, Jakiro gets picked up here. Um, <clears throat> this is pretty big reliance on a Jakiro player, um, though it's not as bad because Life Sailor can initiate with his slow. Once he gets that slow, it makes it much easier for Jakiro to land his ice pad, and then Leshrac can follow with the, the Split Earth. So it's strong. It can, they can run the, the aggressive tri lane, or they can run the defensive tri lane. Regardless, this tri lane is strong. <clears throat> so the fourth pickup for you ain't seen my nips. Um, probably looking to combo with the Bane, or he can pick up the Juggernaut. I think picking up the Juggernaut here would be a really good pickup. Um, the Juggernaut Lone Druid combo is pretty ridiculous. Um, you can push down towers with the Healing Ward and, and, and the Bear. and you, it's so hard for the radiant uh, for the dire side to stop it. Um, of course, you do have the anti push from the Jakiro, but you have the warlock to almost counter with that golem and the fatal bonds. So they're going to pick up the quap. So Nips really likes his quap. I mean, his no, not quap. The puck, puck. There you go. He really likes his puck. Um, so puck. I think he will go off lane. There's a chance warlock goes off lane. But he has no escape skills. He would just get completely destroyed if he runs against a tri lane. Of course, we're assuming he runs against a tri lane. Actually, Warlock might be a support here, and if he's a support, I I don't like this tri lane to be honest, <clears throat> because he's not offline. It would be Lone Druid that's offline. Um, but I mean, it's possible they put Lone Druid in a tri lane. I I I don't know. I can't read his mind now. A Razor gets picked up here. And this is interesting. I want to see how they lane this. Naix could go off lane, Razor mid, or I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Quap off lane, Razor mid, uh, Life Stealer tri lane. That's not too bad. Um, Quap should have a decent time in the off lane. It's just, well, actually, she won't have a good time. She won't be able to get too much exp. Uh, it'll be hard to kill her as well. So the last pickup for uh, you ain't seen my nips most likely going to be a carry um, unless they just want to put the lone droid in that tri lane. But Juggernaut is available, and he would be very strong at the against this because there's so much magical damage and you can just blade fury it off. It's the alchemist here and uh, a farming alchemist. It's been such a long time since I've seen it, and I'm I am thrilled to see him get picked up here. And I thought this was going to be a boring draft. But with the Razor and Alchemist picked up, things could get really interesting. And actually, I am lagging. My computer is freezing. Oh, it's derping around now. So, um, I'm interested to see how they lane this Alchemist. will almost definitely be in that tri-lane. <clears throat> So, so I'll go ahead and introduce the players. So first, on the puck, the captain, you ain't seen my nips. He played puck last game that I casted. Alchemist is being played by the Big Kahuna Burger. I personally know him, and he's he's a good, he's a great, uh, great carry player. Bane, part of that tri lane, is being played by Cheap. He's a nice guy, from what I've chatted on uh, online with him. But you know, it's just online. Uh, Warlock is being played by Changeling Army. On this offlane lone droid, it's Polar. On on this uh, carry uh, Naix, or no offlane Naix. No, 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 it's a carry Naix. It's going to be aggressive trot. Try right, or they're just sneaking, trying to see if they can get a kill in the jungle. We'll see, but I feel like this is going to be a trialing. Otherwise, it'd be a waste of time. Once they try to get the kill, they would have to go all the way back top. 
so yeah, it's going to be five heroes trying to sneak a kill here. So five red captains on the Nax. Alestra gets a Razo. Very nice guy for him to decide to join this, even though he needs a break. Oh, will they catch the Bane? Bane is trying to run away. He's trying to jump. He's trying to get away as fast as he can. Who has the faster movement speed? No, they're even on movement speed. Um, they're now just backing up. Uh, meanwhile, Lesh uh, Alchemist is a bit uh, in trouble. No. He should be fine. The uh, Dyer chooses to back off. So this is a bit of wasted time. Um, I guess it's not that much because they can just... Quap will still make it back. Only the, the hero on the top lane will have a bit of a struggle. Uh, on the Quap, by the way, it's a Twisted Mumbler. On the Razor, it's going to be... What is it? Trivialize? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then on a Jakiro, it's... I can't read the name. I'm freaking blind. It's Sunfire Storm. Cool name, by the way. So it's going to be aggressive try versus a tri lane. Um, yes, Warlock is part of that tri lane. I just don't like this at all because they really re rely on that pull. And I, I feel like the dire tri lane is just a bit better. I'll go ahead and put this on last hit tonight. And, but Warlock, I hope he's going to dish out some damage. Just right-clicking. He, he should harass. They're not even oh wow, Warlock just got away with that one. He definitely could have died there. But moving on, on top, and meanwhile on the top lane, it's going to be the Lone Druid versus the Razor, and this is this should be an interesting lane. I don't think either one has a distinct advantage uh, because look at that link really stealing the uh, the damage from the bear. Mid is uh, Puck versus Quap, and I love this matchup. Let's see if let's see who can get the advantage here. Um, bottom lane, I'm surprised no one has decided to go for a kill, especially for the Dire. When you run an aggressive tri lane, you have to get kills. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. But I guess it's not too bad because they're not allowing the Radiant to get pulls. So, so far, um, looking at the early CS chart, it's the Lone Druid and the Nayx that are leading. It's just five each. Alchemist is kind of catching up. He's choosing to get level one and stun. I guess they want to... Oh, this might be a combo. Is he going to charge it up? I'm surprised he's not charging it up earlier. He needs to charge it up. No, he chooses not to go. He's charging it up a bit late. Those are on Nayx. I'm not sure. Was that a misplay from Big Kahuna? Well, I guess I'll ask him later. <laughs> But honestly, when that sleep is on there, he should have charged it up, and maybe it could have been a kill. And actually, there's the ice path lands on too. There's a split. Or this might be first blood. There is a lack of concentration fire. There's some pings going out the world. Warlock is going to die. There is a stun. Actually, lands on too. Will they try to go? Act Meanwhile, Puck gets a solo kill on a quap. Um, great place for him, but the first blood still goes to uh, to life stealer. So this would help out life stealer a bit. But the fact that Puck was able to get that first blood in a solo lane is says a lot. I wish I could have kept my eye on it, but I was so busy looking at the tri lane. So, um, so far, the trade off for the Dire side on the tri lane has been pretty good because they got the first blood. But Quap died, so so definitely slow her down a bit. She doesn't even have her bottle yet. She needs to get her bottle quickly. Otherwise, she's just going to get even more outclassed in this uh, in this lane. Top lane, they're actually, I don't know, just harassing with the bear. And look at that, the bear is just doing quite a bit of damage, even though Static Link is stealing it. And uh, will they go on this? The Alchemist stun, he will stun him. No, he will get it off on Jakiro. Will they turn this around? Where's the Fatal Bonds? He does not throw the Fatal Bonds. Throw it. Oh, no? Yes? Maybe? No, it doesn't throw it off. That might have been a kill if he had thrown it off. I think it might have, yeah. So, kind of a wasted opportunity for the Radiant side. So, looking at the last hits right now, Razor is leading all um, with the Lone Droid close behind. So, the the top lane has been pretty, pretty even. Um, I'm interested to see how the item progressions are going to be. Hopefully... Well, I wonder if Lone Druid will go for the Radiance build. It's not been terrible, and it adds a lot to their split push. Um, they have a lot of team fight with the Warlock ulti, and the Alchemist um, able to place the unstable concoction. Even Puck is basically one of the best team fight heroes in the game.
So Nayax uh, currently only has 7 and 3 last hits. Alchemist doing much better than them, even though they gave up first blood to the Nayax. And that might be the only reason why Nayax has gotten anything. He's got his boots. He needs to be a bit careful. He's low on mana. Does he even have a rage? No, he doesn't, but the Dire don't know that. I mean, I mean the Radiant don't know that. And is Bane looking for another sleep? I I, he's probably just fish, hoping he has enough for to pull a combo. Uh, he can put the sleep. Um, well, Fatal Bonds was taken out. The only thing about Fatal Bonds, it really pushes. There's the Ice Path. Is it going to be enough? Not the split gets cancelled, I don't think. It, and it's a good cancel. He wasn't going to land it. Anyways, there's a Rage. He actually throws it on a Rage. Life Sailor. Good reaction time by Life Sailor. But now he has no mana. Um, there is a couple clarities on the tire. Will they give it to him? I think they should. Oh, meanwhile, on a top lane, Puck actually rotates. I was just looking at the minimap, and this is what happens. <laughs> and, yes, um, part of my flaws as a caster is I'm zoned in on, on basically the try lane. And that's probably my fault. And while I do this, I probably will miss a kill. But, right, no. No, pretty good. With the rotation, uh, you ain't sending the nips. was really good, I'm guessing. It, uh, it is good enough to kill Razor. Puck dropped the drink wall for it as well. But it is worth it. It will help him um it will help him snowball. Uh, Puck's on a bot lane, hoping to use this Rooney who will use it. Life Stealer is in trouble. He will get bursted down here. He's coming up and he they're looking for more. They might get less track. Oh they're con they're saying concentrate on Bane. Bane looks to be dead here. Um but it doesn't matter, it's well worth the trade. Will they get more though? Uh Warlock looks to be a bit in trouble, but no. Leshrak nearly died as well. Oh, Puck wants back in. Will he get the silence off? He will get the silence off. And just a couple right clicks. One right click. And it's enough to kill the last right. Good patient play by uh, You Ain't Seen My Dips. Lifestyle is back. Quap looks to get revenge on Puck. Puck's is, Puck is dead. He's not going to get out. I don't see him getting out. But not a bad play. Um, of course, it's not ideal that Puck died there. Uh, but they were able to kill the Nayax. So it will slow down his farm. Meanwhile, Alchemist, he's got a thousand gold. Um, will he go for treads? Will he go for the phase boots? Will he go for the race car Alchemist? Um, I I'm I actually really like it if uh, when Alchemists go for Shadowblade. Um, because it almost guarantees he will get a nice stun off and it can help him burst down heroes like Leshrek and Shakiro. Oh nice rage. Um, if otherwise he would have been slept by the bane. So looking at the CS chart, uh, Razor's still leading, but he's closely followed by the Laundred and Alchemist. Lifestealer is just having a terrible time. He is going to go for phase boots. Maybe he will go for the race car Lifestealer. And mid, Quap is getting... So, no, he's actually, he's actually leading in CS, but Puck has been in more kills and, and evolved much more. And Puck is higher level actually in a bot lane. There's an ice path. It lands on Bane, and he looks well. The, the Lestrax on actually whiffs a little bit, but Alchemist throws the stun. Is it going to be enough? They're opening up on his Bane. Bane looks to be dead, and yes, he dies. Even though the Shadow Lord trying to help him, and there's the stun on Alchemist. Alchemist might die. This looks to be really bad. Alchemist has very low armor, only two plus two, and um, four wasn't enough. <laughs> So he ends up dying here, and, it, and so far this aggressive try lane has turned things around a little bit. This is what they should have done a little bit earlier. Their aggressive try lane is better. It's better than the Radiant's aggressive try lane. The Warlock pick I just uh, is just too weak early on. As you can tell, it's basically holding these guys back. He just doesn't add much. What? He's got some right clicks, and he's got Shadow Word, and he's got Fatal Bonds, but that just... Oh, actually, they're going to go in on this. They're looking at Shadow Word. But no. Level 6 Nax and he can't be killed because he has fit Invest. Uh, but waste of mana. And he's level 6, while well, Alchemist is only level 5. He just reached level 5. But those two kills were pretty crucial. Top lane though. Uh, Razor a bit low. There's a TPN from um, Jakiro. He's dusted up. I mean smoked up. He's looking to uh, get a gank. Will it be enough to be honest? Razor could die here. And oh yes, they will go on him. Nice ice pass from Long Rage. It does land, but it's not enough to kill him. He should have walked around here. 
if he walked around here, this was guaranteed kill. So wasted time, wasted smoke, and it wasn't enough. And there's a ping. They want to go on this puck, but puck, um, being a bit patient, he has a DD rune. He could actually solo this quap. Um, if they go into a one-on-one -on -one fight, I think. Puck will win this. Actually, Nix is going in. Oh man, and he infests, but he doesn't dodge any skills. Oh, the orb actually doesn't get on the high ground. He pops the uh, Dream Cool. Will it be enough? No. The Leshrac comes in. Jakiro comes in. That's a lot of hate for Puck. And Puck dies. Yeah, again. And <laughs> it seems to be a trend here. You ain't seen my nips. Usually gets off on a good start, but then he just starts almost feeding um, to a certain level because there's so much hate on him. Um, in any case, it does, well, this is what happens. You get a gang off, and Leshrac's there, the tower, the tier 1 tower, or tier 2 tower, will go down quickly because of the edict damage. So sometimes in an aggressive tri lane, um, Lightning Storm might be a little bit better um, because you can burst heroes a little bit quicker. Edict is, relies a bit on RNG, so not as reliable. But, it's kind of proving me wrong. Uh, they, they've been shown to have enough burst damage anyways, and they were able to get a tier 1 tower. <clears throat> but I think most pros um, sometimes go Lightning Storm with the uh, Split Earth, <clears throat> and, maybe, and maybe just one level on Edict, because one level is usually enough to deal a lot of damage. And, and they're looking to gank on this Lone Druid. The rotation from the Dire have been pretty good so far, but oh my gosh, will they go on this... Oh, nice cancellation, and it does land, but... The stun is, doesn't last long. It's just a level one ice path, and they're trying to go on this lone droid. Lone droid is dead. I don't see him getting out there. Split Earth. It does land, uh, but there's entanglement. Um, Quap Quap looks to be dead. Yes, yeah, she does die. Nice entangle from the lone droid. <laughs> I don't even know if it's nice. It's just lucky. He will have a resummon back though. But uh, that was a very costly gank. In fact, it's it's bad if Quap had to die there. She gets a bit aggressive. And uh, it's unfortunate that the bear got entangled. And there's a TP, and that's a pretty aggressive TP. Uh, but Leshrac is there to follow his alchemist. He's going to throw the sun. Oh, they might get it. Yes, they do get the kill. And it was too aggressive. Too aggressive. Of the TP, Puck comes in. They will get a uh, clean up here. There's two more TPs, but I don't know if this is a good idea. Yes, they do cancel it. That's that's what they needed to do. And I think they're going to at least do a lot of damage to this tower. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Lone Droid has taken it uh, pretty much up the ass, and yeah, there we go, and fast. Oh, but he does get his bear form off, so he should, he's still going to die, though. I don't see him getting out. Yep, the bear is trying to save him. He needs, oh, uh, no, not enough. So maybe they need some wards up here to kind of save him, but I, did they pull the, no, it, Infest was used to try to get the damage, but now they're going to try to push. The tier 1 tower will fall, but the ice path is really making it harder for him to pop. I think about going in on this, on the retreating heroes. There's a sleep just, just to buy him a little bit of timing to get out. So, uh, meanwhile, the dire will get to tier 1 uh, top. So looking at the graphs, it, they're in a, a bit in the favor of the dire. <coughs> And it's about the, the gold graph at least. Well, oh, well, that's an aggressive TP. Um, it is. You ain't seen my nips. He's hoping to get the follow up. Will he come in? Will he pop out? No. Yeah, I think it would have been a mistake if he did. He has no mana to follow up. I guess he just wanted to protect the tier one, and he has been successful. But now they know that um, Puck is not there. They might try to go on this. Oh, Warlock still is not level six. He needs that so bad. Um, once he gets it, they can really start the team fight. And I think when it comes to team fight, they might have it slightly better, um, but we'll see. We'll see. So alchemist, um, when you're playing alchemist, it's always smart to use your ulti as soon as you can because, um, see, if you're low mana, look at how quickly he regens at 5.1 per second, and it, and it lasts a while. So you would have enough about right here, and it's enough to get one stun, enough for one acid spray, and the cooldown for this isn't too bad. And so finally, top uh, tower goes down. Alchemist still farming up a bit, and uh, he's a bit behind. 14 minutes. He's only he's only got about half of the shadow blade. Um, Lone Droid is working on it though. Uh, he's a bit poor. I'm surprised he doesn't have more than that, considering the amount of farm he was getting. I should probably move this to net worth.
There we go. Net worth. And Nyx is leading it. But Alchemist isn't too far because Alchemist oh, he actually hasn't leveled anything in Goblin's Greed. And I'm kind of surprised because there hasn't been that much fighting. But um, okay, now, now Nyx is opening it up on Warlock. But there's a Dream Coil to turn things around. Quap has her ulti. She will try to pop it. But wow, he gets she gets stunned. And no, no, she gets silenced. She can't pull it off. But look at all that damage. There's a Warlock ulti. It does come out. And it's dealing so much damage. Currently, it's a two for two trade. Puck buyback. And uh, will the buyback be useful? Uh, Bang does die here. It's a three four three trade and a buyback. But the I, come on, you got micro to bear a little bit better than that. You need that, you need that entangle. And they really want to save the long droid. Long droid is like, oh, will that land? Oh, if that had landed, he would have died. Is there a first hit entangle? First hit entangle. No, nope. will he get it though? Turning around, that might be a mistake. Well, they're trying to steal it, but he's getting chased. Um, it's not enough puck. Oh, you're pucking the alchemist. So alchemist stuns himself. He's choosing to run away. So when you play alchemist, um. Normally, you can go 1-1 one, one, and then um, put a lot in Gre uh, Grievel's Greed, and the reason is, especially if there wasn't that much action, um, just level 1 stun was enough. Uh, they were able to get some kills though thanks to level 4 stun, but um, I think early levels in Goblin's Gre uh, Grievel's Greed would have helped them get the Shadow Blade a bit quicker. So there's a TP mid by this lone druid, and he's just not had a good time. He gets, keeps um, dying, or oh, he's going for Midas, um, or he can go for Treads. Oh, he does. There's a fiend's grip on the Nax. Nax will probably infest something. Nope. There's a T, uh, TP scroll in, and lone druid just doesn't do much right now. He couldn't even get an entangle. So I'll go ahead and take a peek at the graphs, and. Um, Currently, they're all in favor of the Dire, but it's kind of almost been an up and down game. When it comes to uber late game, I feel like the Radiant will have the advantage because they have the Lone Druid and they have the Alchemist. <laughs> and and Fiend's Grip is just something you shouldn't. Oh, there's a nice Ice Path from the back, but uh, now they're going in. Uh, Puck, will he orb? He orbs. Will he try to drop the Dream Coil? Maybe he should turn around and drop the Dream Coil. Um, just use it whenever you can. Now it's just on a retreat, so Warlock will get blown up here. Puck. Oh, there's a Dream Coil now, but there's no follow up. He just can't do anything. It's mostly just to protect himself. So Warlock dies, but it's okay. Warlock didn't even have his ulti, so uh, it's an alright death if he, would, he was to die. Uh, he looked. Puck looks to be dead here. Nice and fast, trying to get the kill, but it's not enough. Quap just right clicking away. Nax dies. Oh man, that's a pretty big kill. Um, I'll Razor taking quite a bit of damage, and they're hoping to get into He does get an entangle. Is it within the power uh, tower? Unfortunately, it's not within the tower. But the bear really wants to go in. If he gets hit by a lightning strike, he will die. And, and Razor's really, really diving far for this, and he's going to die here. Um, was it worth a trade? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But now Puck is chasing after the Quap. Oh, maybe if he had ported up there, he could have gone. No, Quap, uh, Puck is too low. So good decision by him not to get up there. So a uh, pretty good trade. Um, the reason is they were able to get the kills on the Nax and they get the kill on a Razor. Razor really do far for Android, but Alchemist didn't die. Um, Alchemist finished up his Shadow Blade 18 minutes in. Not terrible timing. Um, could have been a little bit faster, but it's not bad considering he went against a tr aggressive tri lane. And I'd say they lost the aggressive tri lane. So the, Gobl the Grievel's Greed will start to kick in very soon. It's got two levels in it. She should probably go jungle, jungle a bit. Use the um, acid spray. You can put it right here because not only will it hit here, but it will hit these creeps, and you can just farm much faster that way. Keep that in mind. And whenever you get the chance, stack. And uh, he does throw it out here. Um, I wonder, he doesn't have a, uh, what's it called? A quelling blade to cut through the trees though. So uh, you don't get to see it unfortunately. Oh, but he might be able to chain this. So I feel like acid spray is going to wear off very soon. And there might be an engagement bot soon. Last strike hiding in the jungle. They're saying that there's some heroes there. And Razor would be right. There are heroes there. There's an instant rage. It might have been wasted. There's a fiend's grip to use on him. Will he use it? The lone the bear is really tanky. 
A bear is probably not someone you want to cotch around. Look at the combo. There's a dream coil. There's a there's a rock. And look, everyone's just melting. There's a fiend's grip. Why are people still standing in the Jakiro macro pyre? That's not where you want to be, guys. And oh wow, the one actually saves him. Was it a full one? And look at that turnaround. Just when you are sitting in the macro pyre for that long, you will die. You just cannot stand there. And Mondroid, this might be a team wipe. He looks to be dead. The movement speed of the Razor is too fast. No, he's choosing not to chase for whatever reason. They will get the tier one. So a disaster of a fight um, for the dire or for the radiant. For whatever reason, they decided to sit in the micro power ma macro pyre and uh, just fight in that. I can understand if it was one hero, but three of the heroes, the three core heroes, were sitting in the um, macro pyre for so long. And of course, you will get bursted down with the Razor Lightning Storm, with the Leshrac Edict, and the, and the Pulse Unit. And of course, you can't forget the um, Jakiro mac, um, Micro Pyre. No, oh, Quap, sorry, Quap. Quap Ulti. But they're far from out of it. They can still win this game uh, they, if they make it to late game and get a couple more items on Alchemist and uh, Lone Druid. They should be pretty good. A Lone Druid choosing to go for the Maelstrom. Maelstrom would definitely help push lanes. I'm glad he didn't go Radiance because he would. Oh, Bane looks to be dead. No, nope. Quap choosing not to go and feels like yeah, there's to be there were other heroes following up, um, but Warlock might be dead. I'm not sure what he was doing there. Uh, I think he spotted Quap. Oh, she actually blinks in, throws out a call, but no, nope. she's fine. There looks like to be another engagement. This is what the Dire need to keep on doing. They they should take advantage of their spell damage as much as they can. They can. There is a Fiend's Grip, but regardless, Bane still dies. Puck is in, but she's going to die as well. Quap does in the back, though, and it's well done by the Alchemist. Alchemist is opening up, dishing out a lot of damage. He will soon have that. Uh, Al a stun pops out of the Shadow Blade, trying to get some more damage, but look at that. It's. Oh my. Oh man, the, the Razor does so much. He can't throw it, he's gonna stun himself, he will die here! Oh, what a misplay, what a misplay. He uses the, he, he misuses the Shadow Blade. If you're gonna stun, pull the stun first, then Shadow Blade out. Then when you at least blow yourself up, then you're at least Shadow Bladed. So this would really hurt his farm. He's choosing to go PKP first. I think that's the right choice. Um, these heroes all need PKP. There's a sleep on the... Nayx, but he should be fine. So yeah, another one fight for the um, Dire. The graphs are really reflecting it right now. They will get this tower pretty quickly with the Edict. So there's a Qua Puck. Just throwing out an orb. The bear is still there, just not doing too much. His attack speed is still pretty crap. Look at that. Really slow. Oh man, this Razor picks up a pipe, and the pipe would just make it much harder to kill um, all of these heroes. It blocks 300 damage. Man, I really hate toggling this in-game mic. So currently, um, there's only two outer towers left for the Radiant, and this is really well played by the Dire. If, if they gain... Um, if they win team fights, they take towers. Once you take towers, you have map control. Once you have map control, you can starve the enemy, and it just makes it harder for them to farm. I think, um, of course, it's almost counterintuitive since the Radiant have the team fight heroes. They feel like they need a team fight as soon as Warlock ulti is up, but um, the team fights have not been going as planned. Every time they get close to wiping the other team, the other team are just a little bit more coordinated and. Um, it's just haven't been enough. Uh, I think now they must resort to split pushing, and I think this is what they need to do. They're pushing the tower, and look how fast the bear is taking it. But there is a glyph. Will the dire take advantage of it? No. Razor being a bit ballsy here. There's a couple TPs. But they're backing up now. Alchemist, meanwhile, is up in the top farming, and this is what they need to continue doing. Um, force TPs, waste the time, and now he should have a pretty easy tower since everybody else. Oh, no, there is a TP. A Razor TP, so he's got no mana. <laughs> but Alchemist not bothering to check, he's a bit scared. And understandably so. Will he try to farm in a jungle? I wonder. He could go. Will he check the mana? I wonder. 
Oh, there might be a gank on Razor. This is a pretty big gank if they do get it. Uh, Bane is there with the Fiend's Grip. Puck is there as well. This is the two gankers that they need. All the other TP scrolls are on cooldown. Yes, they're going for this Razor. Razor, the Puck will port in. And yes, it looks to be that they're throwing everything on him. And I guess that's okay. Um, Razor looks to be dead. Um, there's no follow-up from the Dire, but the Dire choosing to go for the Roshan. I think this is the better choice. Uh, the Radiant, uh, there's no way they're going to be able to get the Roshan. So might as well try to get the trade, get that tier 1 tower. But the Radiant, the Dire are taking quite a bit of time trying to go for the Roshan. Um, the Radiant trying to get that tier 1 tower, hopefully push to tier 2 very soon. And it, it's possible they could get it because um, no one else has a TP score except for Naix. And keep pushing. Keep pushing. Force the TPs and uh, wait for the call of, uh, oh, the Roshan has been killed by the Dire. And the Aegis was picked up by someone, so most likely going to be the Naix. And he's got a space. He's got Sanjin Yasha. Interesting build. Surprised he didn't go drums. It's almost like the YYF build going phase boots and Sanjin Yasha. There we go. He, he will get it. And will, it, will there be a port? I don't think there will be. Just keep pushing then. Yes, there we go. Just keep going. There's no TP scrolls on the rest, and I guess they don't know that, but it's hindsight bias. And they're melt melting the tower regardless. So this is a pretty this is a good trade. Um, of course they give up the ages. It's not very good. They're also very good at um at defending and turtling. Now that they were able to steal some of the towers, um they almost regain a bit of the map. And they're not as worried as uh being TP ganked from here. And the Dire all have to waste their time going up top and re-push it out. If the Radiant chooses to defend, um, and, the, and the Turtle, which they should, um, they would do a really good job. Uh, although um, Naix does have the Aegis, there's only one Rage. Um, he There's a chance, and most likely he will Rage early on in the fight, die, and the Aegis comes back. And hopefully his Rage will be on cooldown so he can start going ham again. So, and just a tip, um, tier 1 towers do not have back, um, what's it called, backdoor protection. Actually, Bane's getting a bit aggressive here, trying to get that sleep off, trying to get the Fiend's grip off. And um, it's <laughs> he really could have died there. Um, Puck throwing out the orb, just scouting it, maybe thinking about going in on this. But they should be careful, they know their the other team now has had the time to come in here. Um, Lum Droid is not there. They need to continue to split push. They are they were doing it fine, and but sometimes once they get a few towers, uh, teams like to get a bit placid, um, complacent. There we go. That's the word. And they get complacent, and uh, feel like oh, I can waltz in here pretty safely. And they get picked off, and that's the end of the game. And holy streak, sh shit streak will get picked up by an AX, and Razor will also have a streak, and uh, that would be it. Um, they need to port back. Bot uh, to tower soon. Does everyone have a TP scroll? Um, we'll see. Oh, Warlock doesn't have a TP scroll. Will he buy one? Uh, where is he? He's bot lane. No, they should be fine. The Radiant, the Dire are choosing to rotate top, and I think this is a better idea. Um, it might not have been bad to have forced a couple TPs. Oh, but the, the Radiant are looking to push and try to get that trade, and they're themselves trying to force the bot. Uh, TP scrolls low and droids getting a bit aggressive. He might get called out. He needs to back up there as a TP scroll. No, that's a very aggressive TP. Don't do it. Don't do it. Warlock, why did you do it? And he throws out the Warlock ulti and it does nothing. Yep, does nothing. It was wasted. Oh man. That was that was absolutely uh, a horde of a fight. And there's no glyph, and look at it melt. There's the edict. They need to do something about this very soon. Otherwise, they're just giving up a free Rax. And they will get this Rax um, very easily. Look at the damage already. Since they already stole it. They're trying to. Uh, Warlock flies back. But what, what's he gonna do? The Rock's down. And uh, Rax already taken. Puck tries to get back. Um, that was basically free Rax and a Warlock ulti. Uh, there's a. There's a, a Fiend's Grip on the Naix, but Puck dies. And back on with that Jakiro. Um, Picking up burger does have his BKB and he's going ham. He's trying to deal as much damage as possible. They do get the kill on Leshrac. There's buybacks everywhere. Um, now he's trying to chase, but he's going to get stunned very soon. Does he have an invis? Uh, will he throw it out? He will throw it out. Um, wow. Quap looks to be dead, but Naix can turn things around. He's got the Sanji Asha. He gets slept here, and he's probably frustrated because he's getting kited as hell. And uh, Naix trying to run away, but there is that stun. Oh, nice. Big Kahuna Burger might be able to turn this around. At least just pop the stun really briefly, but no, nope, he's going to save it for the Naix, and this is the better choice in uh, Naix dies. But 
all said and done, it favors the Dire because they get racks and they force a lot of buybacks. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think Alchemist bought back though, so I guess that's okay. Um, but Warlock bought back, and he's further away from whatever item or Agums he was trying to get. Uh, Mountain Druid bought back as well, and he's he's a really poor bear. Bane actually gets a kill on a Jakiro. Wow, he's going far for this if he needs a kill to raise a return. Wow, Bane, Bane actually had a uh, killing spree. That's impressive. So Bane has 1100 gold, and in a case like this, um, you should probably go Bracer, or maybe you can start thinking about Force Staff. Uh, just, I think survivability is what you need. It's possible you could go for Ghost Scepter, but the Razor, there, there's so much magical damage, it's almost unviable. There's an end Illusion Rune. Um, I'd like to see someone pick it up. I think Quap is going for it, for her bottle. This Lashrak's really fat. He's got even Vlad's or to really help this life stealer out. Puck tried to steal it with the four staff, but it didn't work out. Some bamboo plays. He could have died there very easily, very easily. Um, Quap even had that orc, and I'm surprised she didn't use it. She had. Uh, I think Puck would die. Oh, they will turn around on this warlock. Warlock looks to be dead, and oh, he gets four staffed, but it's not going to be enough. He will drop the ulti. But for what? For what reason? Um, your cooldown for your for death is 33 seconds. Your cooldown for your ulti is 160 seconds. Why would you do that? Um, avoid doing that. Really, just just die. Even um, because your cooldown, it, they're just not scared now. The warlock ulti is what made them fear you. Um, and the quap gets picked off. Nice fiend's grip. Oh, there's Alchemist stun. It's going to turn around. Will they get it off? He actually stuns himself. I think he was just trying to get the maximum amount of stun, but now he just can't do anything. I guess he just got fogged a little bit. And now all that uh, I don't uh, skill is just stealing that uh, damage from him. And Alchemist is getting turned on. And he, now he's trying to open up on it on Nags, but Nags is really tanky. He's just stealing a lot. He actually pops that out with a fest from. Uh, and look look at this, these two carries, these two core heroes from the tire, just turning things up. And this is where um, Warlock had wished he had saved his um, ulti. Uh, Lone Druid dies as well in the background, he's just diving, and Alchem's doing as much as he can, but he's getting, he looks to be, uh, he's just running away. He knows he can't do anything, they're too tanky for him. He does have a Basher though, he, he wants round two. There's a TPM from Puck. Puck trying to do what he can. I was throwing the orb. Wants to kill Razor, but choosing to back up instead. Nax uh, backs up successfully as well. Uh, Nax is going for that basher. So, still successful. For the, um, for the, uh, Dire. I mean, they're just playing around with the Radiant at this point. <laughs> And sorry, I'm getting an uh, <laughs> invite from one of my friends, and he's probably someone I admire a lot for his play, uh, Koda. He, he taught me a lot from uh, about supporting and playing in a pro scene, um, so I can almost feel like I should reply. But Alchemist still farming a bit. Does he have buyback? Uh, I think he does have buyback, man. It's the gold when he dies. Uh, Alchemist has a Cranium Basher or Skull Basher. Let's see if he can actually make do with it. Uh, he is get, getting kited a little bit, um, but he is leading all in net worth, which is kind of surprising. But I guess not because it's Grievel's, go uh, Grievel's Greed that's really kicking him. So I'll go ahead and take a peek at the graph. Gold wise, they're not too far behind, but EXP wise, they need some help. So um, Alchemist could farm the uh, Night Creeps and be fine. So anyways, back to the game. Uh, Lifesteller, farming out pretty well. He's he's probably got his basher coming in. Yep, there it is. And this just, he's tired of getting kited. I, I would be too. He even goes for the PKB. This is pretty ridiculous. Uh, I should have noticed this earlier. Um, but uh, I'm surprised most players, a lot of players don't get PKB as often. Um, 
I mean, the thing about BKB is you get it's harder to get locked down, but um, you also sacrifice a bit in damage. You could have gone like AC. Um, you could have gone for uh, let's see, heart or, or any other damage. I mean, MKB is good as well. But I guess the problem is more the magical stuns. I don't think it matters that much though, because Fiend's Grip will still go through it. But then again, Bane only has one Fiend's Grip. So Quap has the Orchid, but I have not seen her use it successfully. So last track. And um, Nay is still farming away. And they're hoping to push in. Oh, there might be an engagement. This ward actually... S no, it's not. It's just a Sentry Ward. Oh, it will get dewarded. Oh, what a shame. So Puck still doesn't have his Blink Dagger, and the Dire are pinging that they want to go on a Roshan. Roshan's almost up. They were close in guessing right. So in about a few seconds, and here it comes. Here he is. And I think this time, they will take him kind of fast. Yeah, I think if the Radiant don't react soon, it will go down. And I say it will go down this time. Uh, they don't have any minus armor on this, but um, it doesn't matter. They have enough right clicks from uh, Razor uh, and everybody else. Quap, Quap's right clicks are not anything to uh, sneer about either, because uh, of that Orchid. Uh, but this time, uh, they're unable to take advantage of the Roshanning by the Dire. Yes, I made up a word. Lone Droid is, might be in trouble. Uh, he's going to try to run out, but man, this this last shark is fast. Oh, the bear <laughs> nearly gets caught out and died, and that would have been pretty big if he had to recall the bear. The bear actually has an AC. If they can get some nice entangles, things could be turned around. So this Lone Droid player has been pretty pretty much okay. Uh, he's choosing to go AC and I like this build. Not choosing to save up for buyback and I think that's the right choice here. They're so far but well if they die anyways uh, buyback it just won't matter. They're gonna get picked off solo even if they do buyback. So just go ahead and spend the items. But sometimes it's hard to know when when to buy back or save for buyback and when to not. I think for Bane if he had the buyback he should save for buyback. Uh, he does have buyback. Almost, no. If he dies, he won't have to buy back. But like supports could buy back, um, because whatever items they're gonna get aren't gonna matter too much unless it's like warlock picking up the agams. And this is a weakness of a of a support warlock. He does have level two a chaotic offering. He's actually putting some levels and stats, and that's an important thing. Well, like at least throw out the fatal bonds. There is a fiend's grip on the cop of cop. Will die. Puck actually drops everything, and Warlock also drops his ulti, but it's just not enough. Look at the damage. It's just being negated by the pipe. Uh, Alchemist trying to bash on the Razor. Will it be enough to kill the Razor? It might be. Razor does die, actually. And uh, meanwhile, Lone Dread is just having uh, a terrible time. And he needs a. There is Entangle. Finally, an Entangle. And he's getting it. Uh, uh, Leshrak is being chased. He looks to be dead. Next. Turning things around, trying to slow. I don't know why Londroid didn't just run away. And there you go. Oh, there's that bash. Finally, what he wanted. Londroid looks to be dead. Oh, look at that rage. <laughs> he needs another entangle. Oh, doesn't get it. They're trying to turn things around. Oh, will he get that bash? No, he won't get the bash. He needs a bash. Yes, he needs it so badly. He wants it, but nope. But unable to kite the next any further. Alchemist died as well. Back here. So this looks... Warlock is back though, but not like he can do anything against the axe. It's a buyback from Alchemist. He's got 3,000 gold. I'm surprised he had so much. I guess he was trying to finish up his Abyssal. There's buybacks galore. They want to go. Uh, there is nothing that goes through BKB, but look at that bash. Well, I guess they had something that goes through BKB. Right click and they will have the Aegis. A Fiend's Grip will be up. He's got his Rage. Uh, yes, he will have Rage. Nice Ice Path that lands on too keeps him alive. He will rage soon, especially if he tosses the the bomb. He's gonna try it. I think he should toss it on Jakira. Yep, it's the right choice. And uh, he's hoping to go on town. Go to town. Like, look at that bash. It really does a lot. And there's a fiend's grab, and this is what they needed. Uh, are there any reinforcements from the dire side? Well, this this alchemist is really, really. I mean, uh, this Nex is really tanky, but again, Alchemist. Oh my gosh, what a lucky run! Uh, Nex picks up the Invis rune, and they don't have any detection for sure. Um, will Bane try to sleep? He should turn around and try to sleep. Sleep! 
Now run. Run. Sleep. Okay, don't sleep. Alright, now they're gonna try to go on a uh, razor, but man, that lightning storm doing so much damage. Even a Manta style popped here, and I don't know what they can do now. Alchemist looks to be dead for a second time, but Dust has popped yet again. Alchemist trying to juke, uh, but it's a race car lifestealer. He needs to use, he doesn't want to pop it. He really hopes is No, nope, it's not enough. He will die. His ultimate expires. And a buyback's just not worth it now. This looks to be a second lane of Rex. And uh, I think mostly the dire, I mean the radiant got a bit greedy. They were thinking that they would be able to get farm not only on Puck, not only on Alchemist, not only on Druid, but also on Warlock. But as you can see, under level Warlock is just not very good. Uh, it took him forever to get his ulti, and uh, yep, Bane will die. <laughs> but it took him forever to get his ulti. And this is why you don't want Warlock in the in, in the support role. And this is why in the competitive scene, when he was picked about a month and a half ago or two months ago, he was in either mid or offline where they were pretty confident they would be able to get some farm for him. And the reason is, uh, he just scales off pretty poorly, especially when he doesn't have the Warlock uh, Aghanims, because it gives you two meteors, basically. And when he doesn't farm well, this is the result. Uh, regardless, though, uh, do not take anything away from the Dire. The Dire played extremely well. They executed their lineup as it should be. They get the ganks, and they get the tower pushes with the uh, Edict. That's what I did. And, uh, well, there's an AC picked up on a long dread. But too little, too late. Um, I think if they were able to lay it for 10 more minutes um, before the racks, they could have turned things around. But the Dire closing things out as they should. So now they're just basically having some fun. Uh, they're really wanting to kill this bear, and the bear is not that tanky anymore. <laughs> There's a fiend to grip on the next and the next will die to the fountain. It's probably at the edge of the fountain. They're looking to go on this ice path, lands on two or three, and there's a uh, split earth that lands on three. Oh, and just two. The bear counts kind of like a hero. Look at that. Razor taking a lot of hits. Algus wants to get some. Oh, they eat silence. Look, it does get used, but <laughs> Cop gets blown up. There is that alchemist stun. Will he try to go in on this? Uh, he's a bit slow. He's a bit sluggish. There's Jim on alchemist as well, but he doesn't even have his ulti anymore. Will he at least throw out the um, assets? I don't know. There's just buybacks from everywhere. Uh, this is basically garbage time now. Alchemist might die. Yes, he does die. There's a gem. That's funny way how he dies. He just sits on his butt and falls backwards. And Jim gets picked up, destroyed. I don't know. But, uh, wow. Thanks. Just basically, they're fountain camping them. Tier 4. We'll go down. And uh, I'm glad Edict's being used. So here they go. Um, ancient. Look at it melt. Look at it melt. 3,000. 2,000, 1,000, and that's GG, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, it was an interesting game, and uh, it was hectic. And the Radiant looked like they had an upper hand at first, but the uh, Dire really pulled back. Their mid game is just too strong. So I'll leave up the sat screen a little bit. And I hope you all enjoyed my cast and enjoyed.